on a certain level, this is a bit of a above our pay grade conversation, a little abstract, which we have to have these kinds of conversations. Yeah. And I'm glad we're having and we're sharing it with people because I'm, I'm over people being shy or scared of having these types of conversations. When you keep things in the dark, that's where the devil yeah. wins. And so bringing stuff to the light is what we were talking about and being able to charitably challenge each other to want to do better, not just as individuals, but as a collective, yeah. as a country. Love that we're having this conversation. Practically, I'm thinking about people in my life and I'm thinking about myself. What can I do? And it's a great, again, great that we're having this conversation during Lent. Really, you could have this conversation at any time. But what we're meant to be are people who take up the cross, the invitation of Jesus to live life as a great adventure. And that's what it is. And it's one that we live in the quiet of our everyday lives. We live lives and we're meant to live lives of truth and love. And that is a challenge to a lot of people. It's meant to be a challenge to ourselves. And so like you hear these things, you, you worry about, you know, your spouse, you worry about your kids, you worry about your parents, you worry about your siblings. It's like, where's the culture going? Worry about yourself first. Yeah. Right. Um, worry about being aligned with God and not worry in like an anxious way. But let it be the thing where nine times out of 10, I'm thinking about, Lord, I love you. I'm meant to serve you. Help me be an icon. Help me be a reflection of you to other people. Help me be a representative of your son. Let me be the hands and feet that you want me to be in this world and in this time because we're born in this time for a purpose. Yeah. It's not by accident that we're born now. I started watching The Chosen last week which we're going to get to that. Yay. But it's like, man, how cool would it be if to be able to walk with Jesus? And like, I'm sh- I want to be one of the 12. Who knows? Um, I might have been one of the Pharisees who were just so clung to the law, but who knows? But it's like, no, Jesus needed me, you, if you're watching, Mike, Dale, he needs us to be alive and present now. For a purpose. For a purpose. And that's what behind Purposely Catholic, it's like purposely take up that call that there's a reason why I am here now. Yeah. And it begins by just taking up my cross every day, living the best Catholic life that I can. And again, offering that up to God and he'll do something with it. Yeah. He'll thwart the plans of the enemy. I don't have to worry about that. If the culture is going the wrong way, don't worry about the culture. If you're hearing political headlines that scare you, don't worry about that. Be the person that God wants you to be in your household and let him take care of the big picture. I think you hit it. The The answer is obviously personal responsibility. You know, that's why I always tell people my life changed two, two ways. When I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior, as our Protestant brothers and sisters said, but it's true. If yeah. I had a personal relationship, yeah. and I took responsibility for my own actions. Stop blaming everybody else. It's this person's fault, this politician. They'll start, start with yourself. And then the second part of what you're saying is that we need to take back the adventure of our faith. It's meant to be an adventure, not that, that the safety of like Abraham. Abraham had a great, great life. He's living in his father's tent. And Ur, you know, at the time, people don't understand, Ur was like the, made, the, the big city. They had, you know, probably a couple hundred thousand people living and there. And you're thinking Ur, the city, you are not Ur, like a brain fart. Like you are. Well, that's where the, the root for urban comes from because yeah. Ur just means city. Yeah. That's where they got the word urban from. Anyways. You're just a wealth of knowledge, um, I, I listen and I read. Dropping I, Greek words. Try, 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 to, try, to, try to pay attention. Actually, that's uh, Babylonian, right? Well, dialogue. Yeah, dialogue, yeah. yeah. So, but l- look at the adventure. He was living with his dad. He had it made, probably eating, you know, eating whatever he wanted when he wanted. And God's calling him to leave the A city. A lot of what millennials can relate to today. Exactly. Living in your mom and dad's basement. It's like, look, yeah, it's nice and comfortable. It's nice and warm. My slippers, my pajamas, and I'm on line all day. And that's fine. But the adventure is out there. It's like, you got to chart that course and you got to trust. But God doesn't tell you, he'll, he'll call you out, but it doesn't give you all the steps and exactly the way it's going to be. That's part of the adventure. And you're going to have ups and downs and it's going to be hard and you have to carry your cross, mm-hmm. but it's worth it because it's the adventure. You know, St. John Paul II said, uh, life is an adventure with Christ. There's a guy on Instagram, truth charting, that he took out billboards all over the country with that uh, that saying on there, life is an, uh, an adventure with Christ. And it's St. John Paul II. He's got them all over the country. I just saw that. Oh, cool. But that's also going back to Jordan Peterson because that's what he told Bishop Barron multiple times. Like, how come you guys aren't selling the adventure of the faith? Like, look at 
jo- you know, Jonah fought it. Look what happened to him. But, you know, God had his way still, took him on an adventure, didn't go the way he wanted, ended up in a, be- uh, in a whale. Look at Abraham, you know, he ended up in Egypt and telling, telling, you know, his wife is his sister and then all these problems happen and he's fighting and he's a warrior. It's like, yeah, but he got, he eventually got to, you know, the promised land. It's like, but that's what the adventure is, is, is the journey, the journey of this faith journey is like, that's, that's the best part about it is, but you don't know exactly all the steps and how it's going to happen. And that's part of the excitement. If you always know what's going to happen, there's no fun. There's no excitement in it. And if you, you know, you just rely on yourself all the time. It's like, you're not going to, you know, you're not going to leave room for God. That's for sure. Mm-hmm. You know, and we don't do a good enough job to sell that, especially to young people that being Christian isn't lame. It doesn't have to be, you know, weird. It doesn't have to be boring. You know, you can make whatever you want. You can start any kind of ministry you want. You can change the world, literally yourself. I mean, look at Cabrini. I mean, she was a sickly immigrant who stood up to the Pope Leo XIII and said, I want to go and do this. And he said, no, I, uh, there's never been a woman who'd done that before. And, he, and she fought back and stood up and look what happened. She changed the world. She built and did so much. And she was one person, you know? Why? Because she was aligned with God. That's the important thing. That's it. Yeah. But she had to take- Are you living in alignment with God? But you had to take the first step, which is trust. You had to trust that God is going to, even when you can't see the, the next steps that you trust that God's going to take, take care of you, even if it, it lands you in a- gulag, that lands you in, in, in getting fired from your job or things that might happen, but things are going to happen either way. But if you're following the will of God, there, there's no better thing to do. Mm-hmm. Well, I took offense deeply to one of the comments you just made. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Because <laughs> if you do live in your mother's basement, Uh-oh. then have you seen housing prices, Bobby? <laughs> I have. <laughs> you stay there as long as you want, well, I'll as long you, as your parents will have you. I try to convince my wife when we... Uh, when the house, whatever I was, cause my mom like has a house and she basically, it's not living in it. Yeah. She's living at her husband's house. I'm like, we can just go sell our house, bank all the money, live there for a few years and just stack and retire early and travel and do whatever we want to do, you know? But that's a crazy idea. But I actually read <laughs> Francis Chan's book, Crazy Love. And I told her, I'm like, I was praying about it. I'm like, I think we should just sell everything. She looked at me like I was crazy. And there has to be a balance that goes to talk, the dialogue back and forth. Me, I'm very impulsive, apostolic. Like, let's just go. Let's do it. I don't care what anyone says. Okay, day one, you sold everything. Where are you going? To my mom's house. (laughs) 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 Then, then we figure out what what the next step was. My first step was back to my mom's house. So you haven't thought this beyond two, beyond one Well, at the time, what I was thinking, no, I was thinking about doing, I want to do missionary stuff. I want to do missionary stuff. What I you was know thinking. you have a five and a seven. Well, how old is Avery? Thirteen. Uh, well, it's ten. Ten and seven. Okay. Ten and seven year old. Well, they're wrong for the ride. <laughs> you know the missionaries go to all over the place. I I, I was willing to to see where God was going to take me. That's yeah. how that's how serious I was. It's a beautiful sentiment. Well, women sometimes are there. There's or it's, it's vice versa. But that's what but my conversation of that's why the dialogue is important because yeah. I'm a little impulsive. Katie errs on the side of caution. Like we we balance each other out. And that's how it should be all the time because- For her sake, I hope her name's on the mortgage, not yours. Oh, uh, it's dual. It's <laughs> One the of these days, we're not, it's going to be sale too, sign on the house. Interest rates are too crazy. So uh, we're, we're, we're going to be there until we, we uh, retire. But, but you know what I'm saying is yeah. that, you know, sometimes we have to be bold and have to take, it seems crazy to people. Every, every big idea sounded crazy to somebody. Wait, wait, what are you going to do? You're going to go start orphanages? You're going to wait, you're going to- shoot a uh, Tesla up into the sky, like Elon Musk, or are you going to implant, you know, something in people's brains to help them walk again? Like everyone sounds, you know, every g- big idea sounds crazy at first. Isn't it amazing? Like the, you hear stories about the uh, missionaries um, that have gone into indigenous areas knowing that they were going to be martyred yeah. and they went anyway. And yet now there, there are some remote people that haven't heard the gospel at all. I don't have that impulse within me to say like, I'm going to go and proclaim the gospel knowing that I'm probably going to be martyred. God knows how, maybe even cannibalized. It's like that thought doesn't cross my mind. Isn't there a famous movie or there's that guy, what was his name, Eric Little or something about the the guy who that happened to. It's like a famous movie, like in the eighties, I think. Yeah. I mean, that's a calling. I mean, but God's calling all of us. He's he's calling all of us to, to an adventure. Every adventure is different, but it's uniquely yours. You know, like, can it, yeah, it starts at home. 
I think that's the thing that I want to leave people with. Obviously. It starts at home. It starts by being the best woman, man yeah. that God wants you to be. Yeah. Don't don't just shuck off all your responsibilities and take yeah. off. Yeah. But I that's exactly the, that's the hard part though. But once you get those things together, you got yourself together. The house is, you know, you got your house in order. Yeah. Well, what if you're single? You know, okay, well, what are you going to wait until the, the economy's perfect and the housing market's great and job market looks good and stock market? It's like you can make a bunch of different reasons on why you're not going to do something big or courageous. Mm-hmm. You, know, you, you know, what's the what's the line we use with Father Nate is that that's since the people started using the word discernment, nobody's made a decision yeah. since. You can use it to paralyze, you know, paralysis analysis. You know, it's like you can overthink it and sometimes God's, calling you, but you're fighting that call. Like to be called out. It's like sometimes if you fight against it, it's like Jonah, you know, people forget the story with Jonah. Yeah, he practically he, it's like he died in that whale. Like people don't catch that. Like you, you can't survive in a whale for three days. Like he died, just like Jesus did. That's why Jesus said I'm like the sign of Jonah. Like if you read the story, Jonah died in the whale. You can't survive inside the belly of a whale. This isn't like Pinocchio with the, uh, you know, if you go back and read the story, he literally dies in there. That's, that's the story. Mm-hmm.